Hey, I'm just going over some of my uh, antique slides that I have. You know, and of course, you're all familiar with the 35 millimeter slides. Well, besides these, uh, I have these slides. These are 3D, you know, three dimensional stereo, they call them. And then there's a larger format of slide like this, you know. I mean, look at the difference between a regular 35 mil millimeter slide and, and this one. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable the, the difference in size. But, but I, I like old images, you know. It could be uh, uh, images of old cars like Cadillacs or Pontiacs. Uh, and I like, uh, I like to collect uh, old images of street scenes. Uh, like with, you know, the billboards and the old cars and buildings and so forth. Uh, downtown uh, uh, New York City uh, in the 50s, maybe up into the early 60s, I'm not sure. They had a, one of the billboards they had downtown was a man. I think he was the Mar Marlboro Man. Anyway, uh he, he, uh, there's a, a big picture of a face of a man, and and he was smoking a cigarette. Maybe it was Chesterfield. I don't I don't remember what the uh, cigarette was. Uh, I think it was Chesterfield. But anyway, he was smoking, and then about every fifteen seconds he'd blow it, and and smoke. You know, steam would come out of his mouth, and people walking up and down the street would see the sign. I mean, it was a great advertisement for the cigarette company, but he actually looked like he was smoking with the uh, steam that was coming out of his mouth, and it was incredible. There, the, I mean, some of the uh, signs, animated signs, whether it was, you know, Mr. Peanut, uh, Planter's Peanut fame, uh, uh, just different signs that were uh, animated, and a lot of the neat neon signs, were incredible, and that's it's a fa it's fascinating to me to 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 collect this stuff, uh, so I can kind of go back in the past, you know, and especially with the uh, 3D stereo slides. I mean, it's like you're I don't know if you're familiar with the you know 3D slides or not, but there's a viewer. They were popular uh, mainly in the 50s and 60s, uh, but anyway, you put the double slide in, and it became 3D when you looked in this, into a viewer, but the neat thing about it, it, it actually look, made you feel like you were standing there, going back in time, like Michael J. Fox, and, and looking at everything, you know, from the, from the 50s or something. It's, it's fascinating to me. I'll tell you uh, something else that's fascinating to me, uh, and and that's why in the world would people in their right mind make a bunt cake? Now, why would you, if you're going to make a cake, if you're going to th go through the effort of making a cake, you know, the kids want a cake, you know? The family wants a cake, so the mother makes a cake. But But there's one catch. You know, a fourth of it's missing. Because, why? It's a bunt cake. No one wants a bunt cake. When people want a cake, they want a cake. They don't want a fourth of a missing or a third of a gone already. Think, people. Think. Think. No one wants your stupid bunt cake. I had a friend years ago. That, well, he passed away, but but he was he was the best friend that I grew up with, and his mother used to work uh, at one of the department stores downtown, and uh, about once a week, I think maybe on a, like a Friday or something, she'd bring home a cake. She might have worked in the bakery down at this uh, department store, but she'd bring home a cake, and John would call me up. He knew I liked sweets. I've always loved cakes. I've always had a sweet tooth, whether it's donuts or pies or ice cream or whatever it is. But I love cakes, you know, especially with a lot of frost, lots of frosting on it. So he called me up and says, "Hey, hey, Ron, uh, mother's uh, home and she's uh, brought a great, you know, 
Uh, brought home a nice uh, big uh, chocolate cake. You want to come over and have some? And I say, you damn rights I do. You know, and I, I'd go over there, and 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 he would go and get it, get it, and put it on the table. And guess what it was? It was a German chocolate cake. Have you ever seen a German chocolate cake? Looks like somebody vomited on top of it. <laughs> what? People, people, think, think. No one wants a German chocolate cake. It looks like somebody literally threw up all over it. When people want a cake, they want the whole cake and nothing but the cake, and they don't want any vomit on top of it. So think, people, think, think. There's only one thing that's good about a butt cake is that eventually there's no bun cake. And the same with a jo uh, German chocolate cake. You know? The good thing about it is that, it, that it's over eventually, you know? You know, I don't think the rats and the mice are, would even eat it. It's, it's, you know, people, please, please. Cakes or cakes, you know? How about a nice big birthday cake, you know, with lots of flowers and icing on it, frosting? Oh, those are, that's great, whether it's a white cake or, you know, chocolate cake with white frosting. Those are beautiful, huh? Who in the world came up with a bunt cake? Hey, I've got an idea for a cake. We, we can put a big hole in it so there's no cake there, and a, it's just, you know, no. And, and, and German chocolate cake. Hey, I got an idea. No, we don't know. No, we don't want to put regular frosting on it. Well, we can put a little bit of regular frosting on it, but but the main course, the, the thing that's gonna trigger this thing is 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 we can barf on it. You know, we can barf on it and then try to sell it. Think. Think, people. Think. You know, when I went to school, I was a thinker, boys and girls. I was a winner. When the teacher asked me a question, I always had my hand in the air. Hey, I know the answer. Hey, pick me. I pick me. I know the answer. And I did know the answer. I was always number one. Why? Because I was smart. I can help it. I was just, that's just the way I was. I knew the answer every time. Sometimes it'd be a fence sitter. There wasn't really a correct answer to the, you know, to the uh, question. It's like if somebody said, oh, are you still beating your wife? Well, if you say you, you're still beating your wife, then that means you're a wife beater. And if you say, no, I'm not still beating my wife, that means that you used to be a wife beater. So there's no, you know, it's hard to know how to answer. But I used to have an answer to every question. And and if it was a fence sitter, like the wife beating one, then, then I open it up to to discussion. You know, and I and I told the, the, the people, you know, the other classmates, why uh why that we all need to, to, to gather around and ponder this so we can come up with the best solution to, to the question. And, and, you know, and people used to call me names. You know, when I used to answer questions, the other students, the other classmates could not believe it. They thought I was cheating somehow and they, that, you know, how can Ron know all these answers? He must know the the questions, uh, you know, beforehand, before he comes to class. I didn't know the questions before I came to class. I don't need the, the, to know, you know, what the questions are because I have the answers to them. It's not rocket science. Look at me. And I, and I, and I thought to myself, you know, how can just an ordinary person with an ordinary upbringing like myself 
be so clever? You know, and then, it, and then it dawned on me. I knew the answers, and and and, and I and I was clever because I analyze things. I look at things, and I analyze it. I question things, and then I analyze it. I take it, put it into a mixing well, mix it around, and analyze it. And then I spit it out, and it comes out <laughs> in the form of an accurate answer. I can't help it. People used to call me names at school, you know? You know, they used to, they used to call me names, you know? You know, Boy Wonder, Einstein, Genius, Prodigy, Brainy, Bright, Brilliant, Canny, Clever, Crafty, Efficient, <laughs> Hip, Keen, Sassy, Sharp, Slick, Sharp as a tack, wise, intelligent. Now I had to live with those names, boys and girls. The whole time I was growing up, I had those names, you know. But but I lived with them because I knew that they were true, you know. And and I don't I don't I, I'm not trying to put myself above you. Did you think I was trying to put myself above you? No, I don't I don't think that way. Very rarely do I really think about myself, and, and most of the time, I'm usually thinking about others and, and how I can help others, and what what can I do for others, you know? And, and I wish that you would start thinking uh, about me instead of yourself so much, you know? You've thought about yourself all your life. Start thinking about this guy and what you can do for me. What have you done for me lately? Nothing. You know? You know, uh, you can take me out to dinner. I'll be, your, I'll be your buddy. Be your comrade. You know? I'll be the best friend you've ever had. And, and there's, no, there's no need to fight over who's going to pick up the tab. Because you are. And, 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 and the reason you are is because I want you to receive the blessings of giving. If you give to me, then you'll be blessed for it. If I picked up the tab of the restaurant, then you wouldn't be blessed for it. I'd be blessed for it. And, and and that wouldn't be fair to you. So I'm trying to do this for you in fairness to, to you in, in your world, you know? And and I'll you know and, and, and I'll be the best buddy you've ever had, you know? You might think, you know, you 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 you, you might think that you have friends, you know, but you know, you really don't have that many friends, do you? Huh? What do you have, three or four friends? You know, maybe ten you get high with once in a while, you know? But they're not they're not your they're not really close to you. Would they give your shirt their shirt off their back to you? I would. I'd literally rip my sweater off and, and my shirt and give it to you. You know, why? Because I care about you. I know you haven't done anything for me, but that doesn't mean I can't give to you, because that's the way that I am. Now, if you want to succeed in this life and be a winner, I know you can be a winner. You don't have to be a loser all your life. Be a winner. Be a winner and win. And how do you be a winner, boys and girls? You be a winner by giving. 
Giving to what? To who? To me. Doesn't have to be 10%. Doesn't have to be 20%. The rule of thumb is 50%. 50 you know? Think about it. Why should you, you know, make 120000 a year and me only make, you know, 55000 a year? You know? That, that doesn't seem fair, you know? I, I agree with the bomb on that. that. That's just not fair, you know? Why should you make so much more money than me? I'm as smart as you are any day. You know? But I, I don't make as much as you. So, so instead of buying Red Bulls on the way home and, you know, slices of pizza, different things, put your money in an envelope and send your money to me. Maybe at Christmas time, you know, send a 3D TV, you know, to me, you know? Maybe you can, you know, give me a new car. Why should I drive a 12-year-old car when you're driving a 1-year-old car? That's not fair. How is that fair? I know you work hard for your money, but I work hard for your money, too. So, you know... Now, so, so give. Get in the habit of giving. Giving. I'm giving to you by taking my precious time by, by, by giving messages of an enlightenment and, 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 and all these uh, tender things that I talk about to you. These words of wisdom. I'm full of them, boys and girls. I'm full of wisdom. I'm full of good cheer. And, and, and if you can take these principles and, and run with them, then you'll be a better person, you know? I know you've had troubles in your life, and you'll, and you'll have more troubles in your life. I've had troubles, but I don't complain about them. It doesn't do any good to complain about your problems. They're not going to disappear. But what, what you can do is the extra money you make how about splitting it, huh? How about giving to me, you know, some of your money? Your money should be my money anyway. You know that. What a bunch of losers. Give with a program, people. Give. There shouldn't be two classes of people, the haves and the have-nots. So, so please, deep. You know, reach into your deep pockets. I know you have deep pockets. Reach in there, you know, get a 20 spot and send it to me as soon as possible because uh, I'm looking forward to it. I really am.